Hi everyone, welcome to the webinar and workshop series conducted by TCS in lieu of the upcoming MCS exams happening in November 2024. My name is Nick and I'm one of the lead tutors and evaluators for MCS at TCS. So let's look at the session outcomes. Uh, first things first, I'm going to take you through uh, the examiner's comments uh, which the intention of uh, ensuring that you gain a good understanding of uh, what the examiner expects from you and what you need to do in the upcoming weeks uh, when conducting your preparations. And I will also uh, share some tips with you uh, to ensure that you develop your confidence in the upcoming five weeks. Uh, because if you uh, start believing in your skill set, if you start working on your skill set, you will be extremely successful at your real examination. And at the last um, um, element of uh, uh, this session, I will be sharing tips on how to manage exam stress especially when attempting mock exams, because if you are capable of managing stress when attempting mocks, then uh, this practice will ensure that you are successful when it comes to managing stress at your real examination. So before you, uh, before we uh, get into the nitty gritties, let me quickly remind you about the upcoming workshops which we have scheduled for you. So the workshop series uh, starts from next Saturday. Um, so uh, why are these workshop um, uh, series? We will be taking you through uh, exam standard and precinct specific questions uh, concerned uh, or, or focused on each syllabus area, E2, F2, and P2, so that uh, you are conversant with how each uh, syllabus element is tested at the exam and what you need to do when it comes to developing answers. And in um, each of these workshops, I will be opening up for Q&A. And uh, you know, by the time you are attending these workshops, according to our study plan, you should be done with at least uh, uh, two mock exams. And after completing the mocks, you will definitely have questions and Jared will be uh, there to help you guys out with your uh, questions and concerns. And in the final workshop, which happens two or three days before your examination, uh, I will be sharing last minute tips with you to make sure that uh, uh, you walk into the exam with a positive mindset. Um, someone's mic is on, let me mute it. Folks, I hope you can keep your mics on mute. All right, so um, so that's that. So I hope you'd uh, get in touch with us on a weekly basis uh, uh, via these uh, workshops, uh, the upcoming workshops, so that you can keep track of your performance on a weekly basis. And if you have any questions, you can always get them addressed at these workshops. All right, so uh, let's look at what the examiner tells us. Uh, so if you want to develop good answers, uh, the examiner asks us to uh, develop answers which are totally relevant to the requirement. So with this in mind, in the previous webinar answering technique, I said that before you develop the answer plan, you are supposed to reiterate each requirement in your own words in a concise form. And I suggested that you are supposed to do this with two objectives in mind. Objective number one is to gain a clear understanding of the requirement because uh, as per what I highlighted in last week's webinar, certain subtasks carry extremely long um, um, requirements which go on for two or three uh, uh, blinds. So when you're under exam stress, when you try to read through these two or three lines and try to gain a clear understanding of what the requirement is, you might not be able to do it so uh, with the intention of uh, easing your process when it comes to developing your answer plans, uh, with the intention of ensuring that you develop answers which are totally aligned with each requirement, you are supposed to come up with a simplified requirement. So, you know, uh, in your own words, do up a simplified requirement so that um, it helps you really understand what the requirement is. Because as per the CMA examiner, if you are to score extremely good marks at your uh, examination, you have to develop answers which are totally aligned with the requirement. So with this in mind, you are supposed to, before developing each answer plan, reiterate each, each requirement in your own words in a simplified form so that you gain a clear understanding of um, what the examiner expects from you via each and every subtask. And the second objective of doing this, reiterating each requirement in your own words in a concise form, is to make sure that whilst developing the answer plan, you can always refer back to the simplified requirement and check whether your answer is aligned with the requirement or you can check whether you are headed in the correct direction. So um, 
Doing this will help you clearly understand the requirement and at the same time, whilst developing the answer plan, you can always refer back to the simplified requirement and see whether your answer is totally aligned with the requirement. So with this in mind, um, you are supposed to reiterate each requirement in your own words in a concise manner before you develop your answer plan. And when developing answers, you need to show to the examiner or the marker uh, that you have an appropriate level of technical knowledge as well as you have the capabilities to apply this knowledge in a successful manner. So when it comes to showing technical knowledge, uh, you need to uh, consider the theoretical elements which you have learned via your P2, F2 and E2 syllabi when developing your answers. So for instance, if there's a question about conflict resolution, uh, conflict management and related theories appear within your E2 syllabus. So it's best that you utilize these theoretical concepts when developing answers uh, so that you are in a position to appropriately structure your answer. So rather than trying to come up with your own recommendations based on your own understanding or um, based on the credibility of your arguments, it's best that you utilize whenever possible theoretical elements or concepts when developing your answers. So one objective of um, you know this case study examination is to is to test whether you have learned your theories. And if you look at the structure of your MCS examination, 50% of the questions will be testing your um, uh, theoretical knowledge and 50% of your uh, uh, questions will be testing your decision making or practical application skills. So whenever there is a question, always think about what type of a theoretical element can be brought in with the intention of enhancing the quality of your answer. So if there's a question about, um, 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 you know, um, uh, something like um, NPV, then you can always uh, consider or, or bring in information uh, uh, considering what you learned under your P2 syllabus. And when it comes to F2, things are quite easy. There's nothing for you to think. If uh, a certain uh, uh, accounting standard such as IES 38 or IFRS 16 is tested at your examination, it's simply a matter of replicating what appears within the relevant financial uh, accounting standard. So there's nothing for you to think. You need not, uh, you know, build your answer in a logical manner. You need to, you need not, uh, 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 you know, base your answer on your arguments. Instead, you can simply replicate um, what appears within each IAS and IFRS. So the examiner is trying to test your technical knowledge. So when developing answers, you need to show that you have learned your theory. And on top of that, you need to work on your application skills because 50% of the weightage is provided uh, towards uh, testing your application skills. So with this in mind, with the intention of improving your application skills when developing answers, you need to always consider uh, what's highlighted within your scenario. And on top of that, you, you should also consider about the internal and external dynamics of your chosen company, thereby considering what appears within your pre document. I highlighted how to do these things um, in uh, previous week's webinar, Answering Technique. If you uh, missed out on it, please go watch the recorded version, which can be accessed via our student dashboard because it's of utmost importance that you gain an understanding about uh, uh, how to bring in theoretical knowledge, how to work on your application skills, how to consider pre-seen pre information as well as scenarios information when developing answers. If so, you will end up uh, getting extremely good marks at your real examination. So you need to work on your application. So if you provide highly theoretical answers, you won't get marks. Instead, you have to consider the information presented in the scenario. So for instance, as I mentioned earlier, if there was a question, if there is a question about conflict management, just because you um, 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 reiterate or parrot um, a conflict management uh, uh, concept or a conceptual framework where, which is tied with uh, 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 conflict management, you won't get marks. Instead, when developing the answer, you have to utilize your theoretical knowledge as your base. However, you need to um, consider the information presented in the scenario. And at the same time, you need to be conversant with whether your recommendations are aligned with uh, the needs of your company. That's exactly why you need to have a good understanding about what appears within your present document. So you can significantly improve your technical knowledge and application skills if you attempt all six mock exams because uh, when developing these six mocks, we have made sure to cover all syllabus elements. 
uh, so that you uh, get a good understanding of how each syllabus area is tested at the uh, case study examination. Then you'd know how to approach uh, each and every uh, uh, syllabus area and how to work on your uh, 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 application skills. And on top of that, on top of attempting the six mock exams with the intention of covering the entire syllabus, you have to watch the master classes as well because via these master classes, we are teaching the theoretical element covered within each and every mock exam and at the same time highlighting application, uh, thereby teaching you how to apply your knowledge considering theoretical elements, considering the scenario presented and considering what appears within your pre seen document. So uh, attempt the six mock exams by adhering to our study plan. When attempting these six mock exams, stick to our answering and time management technique. And on top of that, after attempting each um, mock exam on a weekly basis, uh, watch the master classes to learn theory and improve application. And when um, uh, developing answers, they should be well structured. That's exactly why we want you to spend uh, 20 minutes, 20 to 25 minutes of your time to develop the answer plan focused on each and every task. So I highlighted these things in depth in the previous webinar. If you missed it, please go watch the recorded version. So rather than uh, you know, uh, typing out your fully fledged answer right after reading through the scenario, you are supposed to spend 15 to 20 minutes of your time to develop something called an answer plan. This is where you are uh, structuring your answer. So while st structuring your answer, you are trying to figure out whether you are developing an answer which is aligned with the requirement, whether you are developing an answer considering the information presented in the scenario, whether you are bringing in theoretical knowledge, and on top of that, whether you can bring in any uh, uh, pre-seen information, relevant pre-seen information, with the intention of enhancing the quality of your answer. So you need to work on your answering technique. If so, you will come up with well-structured answers. That's exactly what your CMA examiner is asking you to do. And once you have an answer at your disposal, uh, when it comes to uh, finalizing your answer, you have to flesh out your answer plan in paragraph form. So as I mentioned in the previous webinar, uh, based on the number of points which appear within your answer plan, you need to determine how many paragraphs you should have within your final answer. For instance, if there were eight valid points within your answer plan, then in your final answer, you need to have eight paragraphs. And each paragraph should consist of two to four line sentences. All these elements were taught in previous week's webinar. So you have to structure your answer first, then expand the answer there by developing your final answer in paragraph form. Who is telling this? Not me. It's the examiner who's asking you to do, do so. And whenever you are arguing something or whenever you are recommending something, you have to back it up with appropriate justifications. Uh, so there's absolutely no point in saying, okay, the company is supposed to do this. Instead, you have to say, the company is supposed to do this because you have to justify, you need to uh, you know, argue your point, thereby providing appropriate justifications. Uh, then um, uh, if, if so, you are in a position to um, prove to the marker that you know what you're talking about. And um, you know, as long as you justify your recommendations, you will get full marks. So all in all, in a nutshell, stick to our answering technique, attempt the six mock exams, then watch the master classes. Then uh, after watching the master classes, test your knowledge by redeveloping answer plans. If you do so, you will come up with good answers at your real examination, which are relevant to the requirement. At the same time, um, you know, showing to the showing to the marker that you possess the appropriate level of technical knowledge and application skills, and you'd come up with well-structured answers, and your final answer will be in paragraph form and whenever you are you know uh, recommending something you will back it up with uh, appropriate justifications or arguments then before the exam what are you expected to do so the CMA examiner wants you to study all areas of the syllabus so that's exactly why we discourage you to attempt just two or three mock exams most students who are coming through especially those who are coming through the exemption route think that they can attempt simply two or three mock exams and pass the MCS exam uh, which makes absolutely no sense because the CMA examiner is telling that you have to study all areas of the syllabus. So if you are to cover the entire syllabus, you cannot achieve it by attempting just two or three mocks. If you had gone through the past exam variants or past papers, you would have seen that focused on each pre document, there are six different papers or six different variants. 
So why six variants? Because it takes six mocks to cover the entire syllabus. So in order to be conversant with how each syllabus element is tested at your exam, you have to attempt all six mock exams. If so, it's as if you have gone through the entire syllabus uh, within just uh, five to six weeks. And you have to work on your application skills before the exam. So as mentioned earlier, if you are supposed to develop good exam, uh, good answers, you need to work on your application skills. And before the exam, that's exactly what you're supposed to work on. So when it comes to um, uh, working on your application skills, as I mentioned earlier, you need to consider the information presented in your scenario when developing answers. If not, you will not get any marks. So um, even if there is a, a, a there's an F2 related question, something to do with, uh, let's assume there's a question about IFRS 16 leases. So as I mentioned earlier, when it comes to the F2 syllabus, there's no logic involved. Instead, it's just a matter of replicating what appears within the relevant accounting standard. However, when uh, you know uh, explaining IFRS 16, you need to consider the information presented in your scenario. If not, you won't get any marks. So likewise, by attempting the mock exams and uh, by conducting your revision based on redeveloping answer plans, you will significantly... Yeah. I hope you can keep your mics on mute. Right, uh, thank you. So what was I talking about? Application skills. Okay, so um, what, 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 what was I telling? So yeah, so you, you need to consider the information presented in your scenario when developing answers. Um, if not, you won't get um, you know uh, good marks at your examination. And uh, before the exam, you are supposed to practice tasks. So when, when it comes to practicing tasks, what are you expected to do? Type or write full answers. So what are full answers? When attempting mock exams, you have to attempt the entire mock exam in within three, three hours, just like in your real examination. So it's best that you attempt each mock exam under exam conditions because I've you know dealt with students who attempt task number one today of a certain mock exam, task number two tomorrow, and task number three day after tomorrow and uh, whatnot. However, at the exam, you can't do so. You can't attempt um, the exam um, on a task by task basis with uh, you know intervals in the middle. Instead, you have to sit in one place across three hours and uh, you know uh, attempt all four tasks uh, um, together. So as per the CMA examiner, you are supposed to replicate a similar situation when attempting mock exams. So there's absolutely no point of attempting certain uh, mock exams on a task by task basis with intervals in between each task instead you have to sit in one place and attempt all four tasks in one go within three hours. And when it comes to practicing tasks, it's not only about, um, you know, uh, reading through the mock exam and the suggested answer. It's about attempting the mock exam. Because without attempting the mock exam, you might think simply because I read the mock exams and the answers, I will be successful at the exam. That's not how it works because you need to really work on your answering and time management techniques when attempting each mock exam. If not, you will not be capable to manage your time. You won't be able to uh, uh, structure your answers appropriately. So give me a second, please, guys. Someone's mic is on once more. I will have to uh, remove you. Give me a second, guys. Okay, sorry about that. Um, so I was trying to talk talking about practicing tasks. So uh, when 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 attempting mock exams, you are supposed to uh, uh, type full answers. Um, thereby um, attempting each mock exam under exam conditions. So that's exactly why we have uh, uh, created an exam platform, which is akin to the Pearson VUE system, which is the exact replica of the Pearson VUE system on which you'd attempt your real examination. So uh, by attempting mock exams under exam conditions, you will be you will benefit from mastering your answering and time management technique. And at the same time, 
you will be exposed to exam stress. It's best that you are exposed to exam stress when attempting each mock exam. Then you'd know how to what to do to overcome exam stress. If so, you will be uh, uh, extremely successful at your real examination because you'd structure your answers properly. You will never run out of time. And at the same time, whenever you are exposed to a stressful situation, you'd know what to do to overcome this stressful situation. So that's what you are supposed to do before the examination. And during the exam, just like what you have practiced, you are supposed to plan your answers. So this is where answering technique comes in handy. So as per what I taught uh, in last week's webinar, you are supposed to allocate something like uh, 15 to 20 minutes to develop the answer plan focused on all subtasks, which uh, is included within a certain task. So although I'm asking you to develop answer plans uh, within 15 to 20 minutes, when you try to do it for the first time, you won't be able to develop answer plans within 20 minutes. You will actually take something like 35 to 40 minutes. However, if you keep replicating the same uh, technique over and over again, you will see a significant improvement in your skill set by the time you are done with the first three mock exams. So after the first three mocks are done, you will get a good understanding and you will get your bearings with the answering and time management technique. And because of that, um, focused on the last three mock exams, you will be capable of developing answer plans within 20 minutes as per what we taught in last week's webinar. So with the intention of championing answering and time management technique, with the intention of um, planning your answers when attempting each of your mock exams, keep practicing these techniques over and over across the six mock exams. If so, you will be in a position to successfully develop answer plans and at the same time structure your answers appropriately and you will never run out of time and you will be capable to manage your uh, stress levels at your real examination. And the marker is under strict instructions to mark answers on their merits. So it's not about the length of your answer. Instead, the marker is looking at the quality of your answer. So that's exactly why I mentioned um, last week that you are not supposed to think in terms of a word limit or a word count. Instead, always think in terms of the marks allocated for each and every subtask. So you can easily determine uh, the marks uh, allocated for each subtask uh, by considering the weightage provided. And once you know the mark allocations, since each valid point carries two or three marks, you can easily stipulate how many uh, points need to appear within your answer plan. So work on your answering technique, work on your answer points, rather than uh, you know uh, thinking in terms of a word count, because if you stick to our answering technique, you will come up with answers which are totally aligned with mark allocations, which are totally aligned with the requirement, which are totally aligned with the scenario and the pre-seen information. And because of that, you will never come up with answers which are too short or too long. So the marker is under strict instructions to mark uh, answers on uh, based on quality, not quantity. So that's what you are supposed to do during the exam. So you can be you successful at your examination if you practice properly thereby listening to the uh, to the uh, examiner and you know what to do when it comes to developing good dancers. So keep practicing these techniques over and over across the six mock exams because if you do so, it's as if you are practicing answering and time management techniques uh, uh, 24 times over. That's enough and more practice for you to get it right at your real examination. And uh, talking further about the marking criteria, Mark allocation for each subtask appears as a percentage under each requirement, as I mentioned earlier. And watch the recorded version of Webinar 3 Answering Technique if you missed it to understand uh, uh, how to develop answers which are aligned with mark allocations. And uh, the marks are allocated based on merit. So the marker is uh, looking at the quality of your answer, not the quantity. All right. So having said that, let's uh, uh, before we move on to uh, the two remaining parts of uh, today's webinar, let me quickly tell you what we offer at TCS. So I'm on the MCS page. And if you are yet to check the free content, click on this button and uh, create a free user account. And once you have done so, uh, you'd gain access to our student dashboard. So by clicking on this button, you can access it. Go to my courses, then in front of MCS free, uh, click on access content. And then 
you would gain access to the recorded versions of um, all webinars and workshops which we conduct on a weekly basis. You would also gain access to uh, the free study material, which includes the pre-seen mind map and the answer plan of mock number one. And you would also gain access to mock number one, the question and the suggested answer within the website or the dashboard, student dashboard itself. And uh, via the exams tab, um, once you click on mock number one, you have the opportunity to attempt mock number one under exam conditions via our exam platform. So this is the best way to practice your answering and time management technique, which we have taught in um, a previous webinar, in the previous webinar. So, you know, implement these techniques and see uh, whether you are capable of adhering to this answering technique or um, uh, if not, you would be exposed to uh, uh, certain shortcomings. It's best that you understand your shortcomings right now rather than being exposed to these shortcomings at your real examination. So make use of the free resources we offer. And if you are interested in investing on paid content, click on this button and check our sample material uh, before you do so. And uh, uh, I invite you guys to join our tutelage MCS WhatsApp discussion forum. Click on this button to join it because via this forum, you can engage in group learning. Um, and on top of that, if you have any questions, myself or our co-tutor Jared will always uh, help you guys out. And on top of that, we will be sharing um, hordes of uh, uh, free resources via the WhatsApp group. So if you are yet to join it, click on this button and join it. So talking about the two packages we, we offer, we offer uh, uh, the value pack focused on those who had completed their OTQ examinations or those who are coming through the SEMA general route. So since you have completed your OTQs, you are already conversant with uh, you know, syllabus elements or, or theories covered under your E2, F2 and P2 syllabi. So if you are such a student, you simply need to work on your application skills you already know your theory. You need not do anything to improve your theoretical knowledge. Instead, simply focus on improving your application skills. So the value pack consists of the recordings of all webinars and workshops which we conduct on a weekly basis. You'd also gain access to six mock exams with suggested answers. So on top of the free mock exam, you'd gain access to five additional mock exams. And we have made sure to cover all syllabus elements to ensure that you, uh, you, you get a good understanding about how each syllabus area is tested at your exam. You'd also gain access to four pre scene analysis videos. So once you have watched these four pre scene analysis videos, you need not do anything else to understand what appears within your pre scene document. We have done it for you. And you'd also gain access to the annotated pre scene industry and financial analysis slides. So let me quickly show you what I'm talking about. So. This is what um, a typical uh, pre-seen document looks like. So as you can see, as part of these annotations, we have come up with a good summary of the entire pre-seen, which helps you understand what appears within the pre-seen document. And on top of that, we have also highlighted, based on the hints provided by the SEMA examiner, the probable syllabus elements which can be tested at your exam. We have also highlighted probable scenarios which can be tested at the exam again, based on the hints uh, uh, provided by the SEMA examiner. So once you gain access to this annotated pre-scene, um, you'd gain an in-depth understanding of uh, what appears within your pre-scene. You need not waste time to conduct your own research. The same could be said about our industry analysis and financial analysis slides. So our industry analysis slides consist of four main elements. We have uh, defined the industry there by providing an overview concern concerning your chosen industry. We have also highlighted the trends uh, which affect your industry as well as the industry challenges because uh, based on these trends and challenges, scenarios will be uh, thrown at you at your real examination. And at the very end, we have also um, considered two real life companies and based on these uh, companies, uh, we have uh, you know uh, 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 conducted an evaluation so that you gain a better understanding of a real life company operating within your chosen industry. And the same could be said about the financial analysis slides at the very end of your pre-scene, you would have seen your uh, uh, financial statements and uh, the financial statements of your uh, closest competitor. So we have evaluated each financial statement in depth, yet keeping things simple so that you can gain, um, you can easily understand what appears within each financial statement. So we have evaluated the SOPL, the SOFP, 
and we have uh, uh, conducted a ratio analysis concerning your chosen company and its closest competitor. Again, we have kept things simple so that uh, you are in a position to understand the differences in a financial sense between your company and its closest competitor. So these are the type of material or resources which appear under the value pack. On top of that, you'd also gain access to top 10 likely show slides, which indicate the most probable um, uh, syllabus elements which can be tested at your examination. You'd also gain access to a case study familiarization kit. So once you have read through this kit, um, within 10 to 15 minutes, you can gain a good understanding about the technicalities behind your MCS exam. You'd also gain access to a tutor managed live chat and OTQ revision cards. So as I mentioned earlier, the value pack is designed for those who had already learned their theory or already passed their OTQ examinations. So after attempting each mock exam on your own, if you feel that uh, you need to brush up your knowledge concerning a certain theoretical element, simply refer to our OTQ revision cards. You need not refer to your old notes, study texts and whatnot, which leads to a lot of time wastage. Instead, simply refer to the OTQ revision cards to brush up your knowledge in a jiffy. And the value pack is priced at £249. Then moving on to the premium package. The premium pack is designed for those who are coming through the exemption route, as well as those who had failed the MCS exam previously. So both these type of students have a similar problem, uh, which is a gap in theoretical knowledge and issues with application. So with the intention of teaching you theory and helping you overcome your issues with application, we have developed additional study resources and included uh, them within the premium package. So on top of what appears within the value pack, you'd also gain access to the online mock exam platform on which you can attempt uh, all six mock exams under exam conditions, which gives you, gives you the opportunity to master your answering technique, time management technique, as well as stress management technique. And you'd also receive one-on-one -on -one tutor feedback on the last three mock exams. So these are the type of feedback which we offer at TCS. As you can see, uh, we have provided in-depth feedback on a paragraph by paragraph basis, which the intention of highlighting your shortcomings because the objective of seeking tutor feedback should be to understand your shortcomings. Your objective should not be to uh, gain an understanding about the marks which you have gained for the mock exam. Instead, you need to really be focused on understanding your shortcomings because if you do so, you can work towards overcoming them when conducting your preparations. If so, you would be successful at your real examination. So that's why we provide in-depth feedback via uh, 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 the tutor feedback. And at the very end of this answer script, we have uh, provided mark allocations on a subtask by subtask basis. So we have indicated the success rate as well. Uh, so the yellow highlighted subtasks indicate um, the areas in which your answers were not aligned or, or not uh, 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 to the required le uh, level of quality. So after receiving tutor feedback, when it comes to conducting your revision, you are supposed to redevelop answer plans. So when it comes to redeveloping answer plans, rather than redeveloping answer plans focused on the entire mock exam, simply focus on overcoming your shortcomings. Simply focus on redeveloping the answer plan for the sub subtasks which are highlighted in yellow. So once you adhere to this type of study method, you will conduct your studies in the most smartest manner without wasting time unnecessarily because uh, time is of essence. Uh, you simply have five weeks at your disposal. So there's absolutely no point of um, wasting time. Instead, you have to solely focus your attention towards understanding your shortcomings and overcoming them when conducting your preparations. So that's the type of feedback which we provide at TCS. You'd also gain access to the answer plans of all six mock exams. So this is what a typical answer plan looks like. So this is uh, uh, a summary of the entire answer, which makes your life easy when it comes to decrypting the logic behind each answer. You are in a position to easily understand uh, how to bring in theoretical knowledge, how to work on your application skills, what to consider as per the information presented in the scenario, and uh, when to bring in pre-seen information with the intention of enhancing uh, the quality of your answer. So one objective of sharing these answer plans is to make sure that you gain a good understanding about how to structure your answers. And on top of that, as per our study plan, um, each week after attempting the mock exam, 
you are supposed to redevelop answer plans on your own, thereby conducting your revision. So when it after you had redeveloped your answer plans, compare your fresh answer plans to the answer plans which we have provided to see. Further understand whether you have overcome your shortcomings, whether the quality of your answers had improved, whether still you have uh, uh, issues with structuring answers. And if so, by going through, by comparing your answer plans to TCS's answer plans, you will significantly improve your uh, knowledge level and answering technique. So that's the benefit of gaining access to all six uh, answer plans, which we have developed focus on each mock exam. And uh, the premium pack comes with 20 master classes. So focused uh, on mocks two to six, which appear within the paid content, focused on mocks two to six, we have developed these master classes. So um, in each master class, we have explained uh, the logic behind uh, uh, the answer, the suggested answer. And on top of that, whilst explaining the logic behind each answer, we have taught you uh, the re relevant theoretical element covered within the mock exam. And at the same time, we have taught you what to do with regards to improving your application skills. So in each mock exam, just like in your real exam, there are four tasks. So four tasks into five mocks come out to 20 master classes in total. So focused on each task, we have developed these master classes. And the objective of these master classes is to uh, take you through the logic of each answer, teach you the relevant theoretical concept, and help you improve your application skills. So if you are coming through an exemption route or if you had failed, it's of utmost importance that you watch all these 20 master classes. And after watching these master classes, test your knowledge by redeveloping answer plans. And once you have redeveloped answer plans, compare them to the answer plans which we have provided to understand um, what you need to do to be successful at your real examination. And once you have access to all these content, you can pass for sure, hence the pass guarantee. So if you invest on the premium package and end up failing, you will gain access to the premium content in your subsequent sitting free of charge. However, in order to claim the pass guarantee, you have to complete these three requirements. You have to complete all six mock exams. If not, you will be testing your luck at your examination. Uh, before you walk into your exam, you have to be conversant with how um, each syllabus element is tested at your exam. And uh, when attempting each mock exam, the objective should be to understand your shortcomings and practice answering time management and stress management techniques. Um, so there's absolutely no point of uh, referring to the suggested answers, the answer plans, or the master classes before attempting each mock exam, because if you do so, you will be cheating yourself. Instead, with the intention of being exposed to inefficiencies, with the intention of understanding your shortcomings, you are supposed to attempt each mock exam uh, without referring to any of uh, uh, the answers. If so, you, you are in a position to understand uh, the issues. And if you are exposed to these issues, you'd know what to do to overcome them in the upcoming five weeks when conducting your preparations. And you have to meet the performance criteria of 40% or higher focused on the last three mock exams. Uh, we have come up with this performance criteria, uh, especially given the fact that um, we are providing tutor feedback focused on the last three mocks. So we want you to do a serious job, hence the performance criteria. So once you have completed all these requirements, you will not fail the MCS exam. That's why we are providing a pass guarantee. So uh, the premium pack is priced at 799, 799 pounds, which can be paid in two installments, two monthly installments of 399 each, or you can pay in full and save 100 pounds. If so, the price of the package is uh, going to be just 699 pounds. And you can click on either of these buttons and uh, you know purchase the content uh, directly via the website. And all products are available until the 28th of February, 2025. So if you're planning on sitting for the MCS exam in Feb, you can invest on your preferred package right now and start preparations, uh, which uh, ensures that you have enough time to conduct uh, your preparations in a stress-free environment. And uh, before we move on, um, let me quickly take you to, uh, to the uh, MCS study plan to see what you need to achieve within this week. So. We are in week number four, according to our eight week study plan. Uh, and you are supposed to allocate nine hours of study time within this week. You are supposed to dedicate your attention towards uh, attempting mock number two. So attempt mock number two via the exam platform. Then watch the four master classes uh, concerning mock number two. That's where you'd learn theory and improve application. And once you have learned theory and um, uh, application, 
test your knowledge by redeveloping answer plans. And once you have redeveloped answer plans, compare your fresh answer plans to the answer plans which we provide to further understand how to structure your answers. So according to our study plan, within this week, your real responsibility is to find four and a half hours. Three hours should be allocated towards attempting the mock exam. One and a half hours should be allocated towards uh, uh, redeveloping the answer plan. Everything else is handled by us. Okay, I hope you'd stick to the study plan without uh, waiting until the last moment to start your preparations. All right, so then moving on to the second part of uh, today's webinar, let me um, uh, highlight what you need to do to develop confidence. So before the exam, what are you expected to do? So in the upcoming five weeks, you can focus on, focus your attention towards uh, improving your skill set because uh, if you focus on improving your skill set, then you can be confident about yourself. If you are confident, um, you'd be extremely successful at your real examination. So in order to build your, build your confidence and your skill set, stick to the study plan. So I will explain the study plan in depth, thereby highlighting what you need to achieve on a weekly basis in the first webinar. So if you missed out on it, go watch the recorded version. And on top of that, as I showed you a while back, you can refer to the study plan via the website itself, which helps you keep tabs about uh, um, your performance on a weekly basis. And it's best that you stick to a routine at least uh, in the upcoming five weeks. So it's best to wake up and sleep at predetermined times. Uh, because if you wake up and sleep at predetermined times, you will be in a position to manage uh, your stress levels and fatigue levels in a successful manner. If you cannot wake up and sleep at predetermined times, then work on your daily meal intake. Have your breakfast, lunch, and dinner at predetermined times. If so, you'd fall asleep at a certain time. And uh, if you fall asleep at a certain time, you would be able to wake up at a certain time. So at least in the upcoming five weeks, try to stick to a routine because a routine helps you relax your nerves, helps you relax your body as well as your uh, uh, psychology. So with the intention of resting yourself and at the same time managing uh, uh, stress levels, stick to a routine as much as possible in the upcoming five weeks. And uh, when it comes to practicing mock exams, it's essential that you practice under simulated exam conditions, just like in your real examination, you have to attempt the entire mock exam in one go, allocating three hours of your time, rather than attempting um, uh, each and every task uh, which appears within a mock exam uh, with intervals in between them. So as per uh, uh, the SEMA examiner, you are supposed to type or write full answers. So you are supposed to attempt each mock exam under exam conditions to uh, uh, be in a position to be exposed to uh, issues, stressful situations, because it's best that you are exposed to stressful situations right now um, at your uh, then at your real examination. So when practicing mock exams, use our mock exam platform, which is akin to the Pearson VOE system on which you'd attempt your real examination and attempt mocks in isolation, just like in your real examination, um, you know, find an isolated place within your home or it could be your office or in a library and uh, uh, be serious when attempting mock exams. Think that you are, you know, facing the real uh, examination and, you know, keep uh, practicing answering time management and stress management techniques throughout the mock examination. And when attempting each mock exam, as I mentioned earlier, stick to the exam technique routine. Uh, so the routine is to allocate five minutes of your time to read the scenario. 20 minutes to develop the answer plan focused on all subtasks which appear within a certain task and uh, the remaining 20 minutes uh, should be uh, uh, allocated towards expanding your answer plan in paragraph form. So you need to get your bearings with it because it has everything to do, do with this answering and time management technique has, has everything to do with muscle memory. So you have to keep replicating the same uh, techniques over and over in order to gain um, uh, you, uh, or get your bearings or champion these techniques uh, before you walk into your real examination. And um, when attempting mock exams, as I mentioned earlier, it's best that you are exposed to stressful situations. And what are you supposed to do to manage these stressful situations? So the first step towards managing uh, stress at your exam is to stick to our answering technique. By sticking to our answering technique, you are 
not uh, trying to multitask. Instead, you are allocating a separate time to read, a separate time to plan, a separate time to type. So rather than trying to read, plan, and type at the same at, at the same moment, which leads to unnecessary inefficiencies, unnecessary uh, uh, stress levels, it's best that you divide your attention on the main three elements covered within the mock exam. So allocate five minutes to read through the entire scenario, then move on to answer structuring or answer planning. So it's only about uh, utilizing your prefrontal cortex or the front part of your brain when it comes to planning out your answer. And once you have done so, uh, when it comes to expanding the answer plan, when it comes to typing, it's simple because you need not think you already know what you should include within the answer, what you should type. So uh, rather than trying to multitask, you are focusing on each task um, at separate intervals. So this will help you with managing stress. And also, I said that um, when developing the answer plan, you are supposed to uh, uh, you know, develop it on the answer screen itself. Do not use the scratch pad because when you're trying to shift between your scratch pad and your answer screen, it leads to unnecessary uh, 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 inefficiencies, which in turn leads to stressful situations. So uh, your objective should be to get rid of inefficiencies as much as possible. So with that in mind, stick to our answering technique. And when attempting each uh, mock exam, think that you are the finance manager of shiny glass. If so, you will come up with the best type of recommendation. So if you think in terms of a uh, finance manager, if you think that you are really responding to your boss, could be a board member or your senior finance manager, then you will come up with the best type of answers. So by sticking to the answering technique, you are in a position to avoid all uh, types of inefficiencies. By avoiding all types of inefficiencies, you will be partially managing your stress. Still, if you encounter stress, you are supposed to do uh, uh, or take certain steps with the intention of managing your stress levels. So drink some water. Uh, it will help you calm your nerves. However, if you are attempting your exam at home, you can't do this. And on top of that, in certain examination centers, you won't be allowed to carry a water bottle. If so, you can forget about this. However, um, if you have the opportunity, drink some water to calm your nerves. So before uh, starting each task, let's assume you are done with task number one. Before uh, starting task number two, if you can carry a water bottle with you, drink some water to calm your nerves. And on top of that, work on your or focus on your breathing. So uh, close your eyes and breathe slowly for two minutes whenever you are exposed to a stressful situation. You might think that I'm crazy to ask, uh, ask you to take a break for two minutes. Um, or, although you might see this as a wastage of time, this is not the case because it's best that you refresh your brain before, uh, before uh, you know, uh, uh, it's, it's best to refresh your brain rather than trying to manage stress on your own. Rather than, rather than uh, you know, um, uh, trying to operate under a stressful situation, it's best to try and take a break and refresh your brain. So why should you focus on your breathing which the intention of switching off a certain part of your brain, which is known as the amygdala. So this is uh, this part, which is uh, denoted in blue, is your amygdala. So at the exam, you are supposed to make rational decisions. So whenever human beings are involved with rational decision making, we are supposed to use the front part of our brain or the prefrontal cortex. So it's best that you think through your prefrontal cortex. However, when you are exposed to a stressful situation, your prefrontal cortex switches off and your brain functions will shift to your amygdala. And the amygdala gives you the fight or flight response or the stress response. So a fight or flight uh, response is a situation where the brain is asking you to fight the stressful situation or get away from the stressful situation. So at the exam, since you cannot fight the stressful situation, your brain will constantly keep telling you to get away from the stressful situation. So how can you get away from the stressful situation? By finishing the exam as fast as possible. So that's exactly why when marking answer scripts, I will encounter this as well. Most students are comfortable in the first two tasks because uh, your uh, mind is fresh. You are not exposed to extreme levels of fatigue. However, when you keep using your prefrontal cortex for more than 45 minutes, 
you will be ex exposed to stressful situations and your brain functions will tend to shift from your prefrontal cortex to the amygdala. Okay, so that usually happens because if you look at the human brain, the attention span is just there for 45 minutes. So after the first 45 minutes, if you're working at office, you can take a break. If you, know, you can drink some water, you can have some coffee or tea, you can have a chat with your colleagues, you can walk away from your uh, cubicle, or if you are into smoking, you can go, um, you know, smoke a cigarette, which the intention of uh, uh, getting rid of uh, the stressful situation. So although that is the case, at your exam, you can't do it. You'd be, you have to sit in one place um, for three hours at a stretch and keep practicing answering and time management techniques over and over. Um, so when you are exposed to such a situation, you'd be somewhat comfortable in the first two tasks, but uh, towards the remaining two tasks, your brain will constantly keep uh, telling you to uh, finish off the exam as fast as possible. That's exactly why most students provide half-hearted or incomplete answers towards tasks three and four. So whenever your brain is asking you to you know, finish the mock exam or, or fin finish your exam as fast as possible, what are you expected to do? You have to take steps or actions to switch off your amygdala. And the only way to switch off your amygdala and shift your brain functions back to your prefrontal cortex is to focus on your breathing. So when it comes to focusing uh, on your breathing, what should you do? Uh, you should breathe through your nose and exhale from your mouth. Inhale from your nose and exhale from your mouth. So when inhaling, count to three. These should be three, three slow counts uh, um, paced such as this. One, two, three. And when you are exhaling, uh, uh, practice the same methodology. Exhale through your mouth and count to three in this space. One, two, three. So for two minutes, you are doing something. You are focusing on your breathing. When you are inhaling through your nose, you are counting to three, uh, uh, three slow counts. And when you are exhaling, you are doing it through your mouth. Again, three slow counts. That's the only way to switch off your amygdala. So you might think that you are wasting two minutes of your time. Actually speaking, if you take steps to switch off your amygdala, then you are actually gaining time. It's as if you are gaining time. So whenever you are attempting a mock exam or when attempting your real examination, you have to utilize your prefrontal cortex. But uh, according to the way in which our brain is structured, you cannot focus for more than 45 minutes. So it's best. So uh, when you cannot uh, utilize your prefrontal cortex for more than 45 minutes, your brain will ask you to take a break because you are thinking through your amygdala. So whenever you are exposed to a stressful situation, know what's in play, know that your amygdala is in uh, full play and try uh, and uh, switch it off and try to shift your uh, uh, brain functions towards your prefrontal cortex or the front part of your brain, which should be used for rational decision making. So it's best before you start um, a, a new task to take a break and focus on your breathing for two minutes and count to three when inhaling and count to three uh, when exhaling for two minutes. Because if you do so, it's as if you are refreshing your brain every 45 minutes. If so, uh, the tendency of you being exposed to stressful, uh, stressful situations will be extremely low because you are at 45 minute intervals uh, shifting your uh, brain functions to the prefrontal cortex. And after 45 minutes, uh, brain functions will try to shift to the amygdala and once you are done with the task before you uh, start the next task you are again focusing on your breathing thereby focusing uh, uh, or thereby uh, uh, bringing back your brain functions to the prefrontal cortex then you can focus for 45 minutes once more let's assume you are done with task number two once you are done with task number two now you are thinking through your amygdala again you are focusing on your breathing to uh, bring your brain functions to your prefrontal cortex, then you are, you can finish off uh, task number three before starting task number four. Shift your uh, uh, brain functions from your amygdala to your prefrontal cortex. So uh, when you are exposed to a stressful situation, your objective should be to switch off the amygdala. So without knowing this, if you try to you know simply you know still whenever 
um, uh, you know, even when you are exposed to a stressful situation, if you try to keep fighting it and try to keep moving forward, you won't succeed when you are exposed to stressful situations. And when you try to fight it, it leads to extreme levels of stress and extreme levels of stress leads to brain freeze. Why brain freeze? Because you are supposed to think using your prefrontal cortex, but your prefrontal cortex is not working when you are exposed to extreme levels of stress. Instead, your amygdala is in full play. So whenever you are exposed to a stressful situation, focus on, uh, on your breathing, uh, stick to this uh, uh, you know, stress management technique. If so, you will successfully overcome these stressful situations. So when attempting your upcoming mock exams, you are supposed to keep practicing this technique over and over. I didn't teach you uh, stress management techniques in the previous webinar because uh, it's not easy to master your answering and time management techniques. So that's exactly why I taught you these techniques and asked you to attempt two mock exams, the free mock exam and mock number one under exam conditions, thereby uh, practicing your answering and time management techniques. And now from this week onwards, when attempting the weekly mock exam, uh, practice your exam, uh, uh, sorry, practice your stress management technique as well, because without practicing it, you won't be able to uh, have control of your brain. So when you are implementing these uh, stress management techniques for the first time, you won't be successful. Just like what you experienced when uh, implementing answering and time management techniques for the first time. However, uh, this has everything to do with muscle memory once more. So keep practicing these techniques over and over across the upcoming mock exams, because if you do so, you will have the capability of developing well-structured answers at your real exam. You will never run out of time. And whenever you are exposed to a, st a stressful situation, you will overcome such a stressful situation and keep moving forward in a successful manner. So that's what you are supposed to do to manage stress. So the first step is uh, uh, to stick to the answering technique that uh, helps you get rid of undue inefficiencies, thereby uh, helping you to get rid of uh, uh, exam stress partially. And even after sticking to this technique, if you're exposed to a, st a stressful situation, especially due to fatigue, focus on your breathing, switch off your amygdala, and always uh, refresh your brain and uh, get your brain functions back to your prefrontal cortex. If so, you'd uh, be engaged with rational decision-making. So when you are thinking rationally, you will come up with the best type of answers. All right, and in the upcoming five weeks, uh, you are supposed to avoid these deflections. Uh, don't rely on predictions because I've seen tutors out there predicting the type of questions and scenarios which can be thrown at you at your exam. Um, we can predict based on the information presented in the pre-scene. However, um, you are supposed to operate in a real-life corporate environment. The SEMA examine is trying to replicate a real-life corporate environment. So in a real-life corporate environment, However much well-versed you are about the company's operations, about its financial standing and what happens within the industry, you cannot predict the type of issues your company is going to face or the type of opportunities uh, the board members are trying to exploit. So with this in mind, don't uh, go for predictions. Instead, simply work on your answering technique. Simply be conversant. Try to be conversant with how each syllabus element is tested at your exam. Your job is not to predict anything. Because if you try to only base your preparations on predictions, what if something else appears within your uh, real examination? Then you are doomed. So in order to avoid such inefficiencies, don't uh, try to base your uh, preparations on predictions. Instead, stick to our study plan, which is about attempting a mock exam per week, watching the master classes to learn theory and uh, improve application skills, and conduct your revision by redeveloping answer plans focused on the weekly mock exam. And excessive industry analysis is a killer because as a finance manager, you are located at the middle level of the organization. You need not have an in-depth understanding about uh, what happens within your industry. Simply refer to our set of industry analysis slides and uh, refer to um, the industry analysis uh, um, um, uh, pre-scene analysis video. Um, so uh, out of the four videos, one is dedicated towards an industry analysis. So once you watch this video, you need not do anything else. You need not waste time to conduct your own research uh, concerning your chosen industry. And misguided use of past papers should be avoided as well. There's absolutely no point of trying to rely on past exams uh, or past exam variants, especially given the fact that these past exam variants are based on 
different pre-seen documents and the information which appears within these uh, pre-seen documents are totally different to yours. The financial statements are different, the industry is different, the inter internal dynamics are different. So uh, the way in which uh, each type of syllabus element can be structured is quite different because uh, uh, the way in which uh, certain theoretical elements can be tested will depend on uh, the internal dynamics and the industry dynamics and what appears within the financial statements of your chosen company. For instance, if you look at uh, 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 last session's pre-seen, it was based MCS pre-seen, it was based on a quoted company. But this time's pre-seen is not based on a quoted company. It's a limited liability company. It's not a quoted company. So these differences will impact in the way in which certain theoretical elements are tested at your exam. So there's absolutely no point of uh, relying on past uh, papers or past exam variants and expecting to pass your MCS exam. Uh, instead, you need to uh, uh, focus your attention towards conducting your preparations, uh, considering um, exam standard and pre-seen specific mock exams. And information overload is a killer, uh, especially close to the exam. Uh, students will try to do everything under the sun. As a, a student, when, when I was a student, I you know did it as well. Uh, you know, um, rather than focusing your attention towards attempting mock exam and mock exams and redeveloping answer plans to improve your answer structures, you try to go through your uh, study notes, uh, you know, study texts and whatnot. You will think that you need to gain a better understanding about theoretical knowledge. So you'd start memorizing theories and whatnot. All these things are irrelevant to your exam. So simply stick to our study plan according to our study plan. You are supposed to conduct your preparations in a relaxed environment, thereby allocating just nine hours of study time per week. So don't wait until the last moment. Start your preparations now. If so, you can get everything done simply by allocating nine hours of study time, out of which four and a half hours is your re real responsibility. Finding four and a half hours is your real responsibility. Everything else is handled by us. So simply rely on the six mock exams and learn your theory and application focused on the same six mock exams and conduct your revision focused on uh, the six mock exams. Don't do anything else because it won't add any value to your preparations. And overemphasis on the exam blueprint is a, a wastage of time as well. Uh, we have covered all these elements uh, which appear within the exam blueprint via our webinar series. All right, so you might be attempting the exam at home if so. Um, click on this link. I will share this link via the WhatsApp group. Click on this link and uh, check out how the Pearson VOE system works. It's uh, Then you'd know uh, that it's uh, similar to the exam platform which we have developed at TCS. However, it's best that you get your bearings with uh, uh, the Pearson uh, platform. So click on this link and uh, read through the instructions provided and um, you know check out how uh, uh, the Pearson VOE system works. All right, so uh, we are proud to say that we achieved a 95% pass rate uh, for the August session or the previous session. And those who stuck to our study plan um, were extremely uh, successful at uh, the real examination. So when the pass mark was just 80, more students who uh, stuck to the study plan achieved more than 100 marks. So that's exactly why we are providing a pass guarantee under the premium package because it's quite easy to pass this examination. If you stick to our study plan. We are not asking you to dedicate a lot of your time on studies. We know for a fact that you have your uh, family commitments and work commitments. And on top of that, you are uh, trying to conduct your studies, which is not easy. That's exactly why we have done a lot of research and uh, uh, developed a study system, which just, um, you know, uh, and, and we are just requesting you to allocate nine hours of study time per week, which is quite easy. Uh, you know, um, uh, compared to a situation where you have to conduct your own research focused on your pre-seen, you have to, uh, you know, understand the logic behind each answers. If you refer to past exam variants, you'd have to compare, uh, you know, your pre-seen to past pre-seens to understand the logic behind uh, uh, the answers which appear within past exam variants. So you are supposed to avoid all these types of issues and instead solely focus on attempting the six mocks conducting your revision focused on the six mock exams, learning theory and application focused on the six mock exams. If so, you will uh, pass for sure at your MCS examination. All right, so having said that, uh, I'm opening up for a Q&A. 
So uh, as per our study plan, you were supposed to attempt the first two mock exams, the free mock exam and mock exam one. So if you have uh, completed uh, these two mock exams, definitely you'd have questions. If so, you can raise the raise your concerns. Now I'm going to pause the recording. All right, folks. Uh, so thank you very much for those questions. I hope I addressed everything. So if you want to contact us, you can do it via our website, which is uh, www.studyattcs.com. Um, simply visit our website and click on the contact button and drop your message. Our admin staff will get in touch with you via email during office hours. And you can email us at info at study at and WhatsApp us on this number. And I invite you guys to follow us on our social media handles, especially YouTube and TikTok, because via YouTube, you'd gain access to the recorded versions of these uh, uh, webinars and workshops which we conduct on a weekly basis and via TikTok you'd gain access to uh, a set of mind maps uh, you know a set of videos which carries a good mind map of your entire pre-scene so on on a daily basis on your way to office keep watching these uh, TikToks to keep reminding yourself um, uh, about what appears within your pre-scene document so having said that it brings us to the end of the final webinar conducted in lieu of uh, uh, the MCS sessions happening in November and next week we are kickstarting our workshop series which will be conducted by our co-tutor Jared and I hope you'd attend them without fail as well and if you are still contemplating about starting your preparations you still have time you still have five weeks at your disposal so start your preparations right now uh, rather than waiting until the last moment because if so you won't have enough time to uh, attempt uh, all the mock exams it's not only about attempting the six mocks you need to work on your revision as well in order to improve your chances of passing this uh, examination so in order to um, have enough time to attempt all the mock exams and conduct your revision focused on these mock exams start your preparations now and um, if you need any help you can always reach out to us so thank you very much for joining i expect to see you guys next week at our first workshop Thank you very much and take care.